Hello YouTube. And when I say hello YouTube, I mean the users of YouTube. And as users and creators on YouTube, we are the owners of YouTube. If YouTube pisses off too much, we'll all go somewhere else. And they're not going to do that. <clears throat> so, because they know. We are the owners of YouTube. So, hello YouTube. Um, I haven't really got this planned out. And um, I wasn't going to do it today. I was going to wait till my son had gone back to his mum's. So I probably would have done it Monday. But um, I find myself with a computer that's just been really slow to fix and kind of got this sort of stuff on my mind. So here we go. Right. So we got the 4D world. Three dimensions plus time, right? And, you know, all time the stuff I've been talking about with the soul is like your 5D. And when I try and explain it, I have to exp or, or give you something to picture. Obviously, I have to sort of find some sort of three-dimensional way, <laughs> forget time, to, to sort of, so you can perhaps picture it. Um, so, when you're in 5D, you are like your soul. That is you. That is the true you. Called the higher self. Da 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 da. Now, so I've been realising that when I'm there, my brothers, because I'm male, my brothers are like alongside of me, like to the sides. And a sister's are like a gulf away. There's this big gulf between. And a few years ago, when I was opening up my connection to my soulmate, even though it was very weak, I wasn't sure, it changed my mind on who I thought it was, stuff like that. What happened there is I opened up a channel over to this gulf of my sisters, all the female souls, and therefore was able to feel them through my soulmate's connection, through the connection I had with my soulmate. Now that connection with my soulmate's getting stronger and stronger, and I hadn't really noticed that this is what was going on, I didn't fully understand it. Um, can I draw a picture? I just just draw a picture in the air, right? So, so I mean, you can imagine it like you've got the line of boys here, and then the line of girls here, and this is me, and there's my connection to my soulmate, and any sisters that I connect to would be through that soulmate connection. Now, before I had that to connect with a female, I'd have to look at them or touch them. Which, if you think about it, is what a lot of men want to do. They want to look at women, they want to touch women to get that connection. And it's since opening my soulmate connection that I've been able to feel. And I couldn't do that before. That didn't, that didn't necessarily happen. Maybe, you know, no, it, it didn't. This is something which has come on and grown. And now that I know about it, it's real quick. So... If I feel something from another woman, I just it just straight away sort of triggers the soulmate connection. It's um it's interesting, there's a lot more there to do. I got my guys, my bros, you know, it's really easy to feel my brothers. You know, they're there. Like we're so like the tree of life, you know, one of us is the branches and one of us is the roots. So the male Say the male of the branches and the female of the roots. You know, we've got me and my brothers, and then my soulmate and my sisters. There's that gulf between, and when you make that connection, it 
the one eternal love like lo loves that because we've got the one eternal love coming at our back and it comes into the center of your back and I felt can I, I felt it where I was feeling my soulmate and the and the one eternal love coming from my back through me if you like then towards my soulmate and then that the female part of the one eternal love would be coming the other way, you know, so it's making this connection. And this is why this is the big this is the big thing. Because when we start making that connection, we're creating love. And, you know, creating love's what love is all about. <laughs> love wants to grow. And and that's happening. And so it's a really so it's a big thing. It's a big thing for the all of existence. And it's not just our world that's going through this. It's, there's other planets in this universe that are going through this. And there's other universes. Billions, millions, nearly infinity. It blows my mind. I, don't, you know, I can't conceptualize infinity yet, of course. But anyway, you know, that's what it is. And we, you know, we as souls, we are part of the one eternal love. But we are, we are like, you know, think of a, a piece of glass that's cut interestingly and the light shining through it. You know, we're all one of these bits of glass, if you like, and we're all unique and different. And we're going to remain us, but we're all connected as well. And it's just, it's just amazing. And that leads me on to um, these connections and... Um, Got to do a shout out here to what's his name again? <laughs> shampoo. Yeah, it's Thomas. Thomas Shampoo, spelt Champ Ooks. Um, he's 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 really cool. He's making some, he's making loads of videos and speaking from the heart and he's saying some real true stuff. He's you know I know God is guiding him and. More about him in a bit, probably. But um, in one of his videos, he came up with this phrase, language of vibration. And that just hit me like, boom. That's, that's the most succinct way of putting how the soul talks, how God communicates to us. And obviously vibration, you know, just think of it on its own, but... You know, soul vibration is so deep and different things get involved, colours and all sorts, all kinds of different feelings and, you know, this is the language of vibration. And when we connect to others, that creates a sort of a unique sort of vibration too, you know, so uh, think of me and my best mate from, you know, when I was really young and we Still, he's a different country, but you know, like best mates, and <clears throat> um, you know, me and him, feeling like me and him mates. That's that creates this sort of vibration, and again, it's it is creating love, and that's like the best possible thing that can be doing. You know, when you when if if there was any resentment between each other, you know, then then it would be a different feeling, a different type of frequency and perhaps wouldn't be creating love. Um, me and my son, that again is a different feeling, a different vibration going on there. Me and my brothers, you know, just us three, like, that That again has this unique feeling in it, you know, it's, and it's strong because we were, you know, we were young together and, and everything else. and. And then me and God, me and Father God, me and Mother God. And, and that is awesome because that, I understand from that, that God is my parent and, and this, you know, God is that sort of teacher role. So our relationship is this sort of, I'm the student and God is the teacher and, and so these feelings come down from God and it's and it's helping me grow, it's guiding me and 
it's all the language of vibration. So we we all understand this language. Um, we we want to experience more of it so we can understand it more. But you know, when you get a feeling, you you understand something of what it's about. So so I'm really grateful for this Thomas Ch shampoo. And, um, you know, it's going to sound, okay, but, you know, I've been out there before, so, you know, this is kind of my feeling that um, Thomas Shampoo is one of my wingmen. Because, I, you know, out of all people I know that I've spoken to, uh, all people on the internet found and stuff like this, I've never found people who I sort of feel really get it what I've been going on about the heart the feeling and and when this event stuff you know you sort of just look in videos people who mentioned the event and I said before I feel like it is sort of helping to bring people together and I found and he was one of the guys I found through that and I, I've said before how you know I feel like people will start overtaking me like yeah, so I'm going to go out and say, you know, I've, I do feel like I've, it's it's me that's sparked this off, September 2014, and I've been bringing the truth into my soul and feeling with it, and and that in a sense has had ripple effects, um, with all with all our brothers and sisters, you know, because we're all connected, so, sort of taken something on into the, into the sense where it's affected my DNA which will then kind of flick off and trigger something like that. Sounds really big headed and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But so I, yeah, so I feel like, you know, that has sort of sparked other people off and then they are going to overtake me. You know, because I've I'm still going to still going to be growing and you know I don't know this for sure and I don't know exactly when they'll overtake me they may have already done I do you get slight feeling that they may have already done in in some ways like perhaps not with the overall knowledge because that's been my goal is just to get the get the truth down but in in terms of using using the soul and and grasp in some of these elements of it you know I I do really feel like now it's it's uh, it's this is a team game and and it's and it's good and it's happening and so thanks to Thomas Shampoo and um, you know I don't want to say too much to him because I just know he's guided by God and and guided by his heart and he'll find the way find his way. And the other guy, who I feel like is my other wingman, and they probably don't agree with this at all, but this is, this is me, it's called Activation Coaching. I do have a feeling he might change that, I don't know, but that's, that's his name, he hasn't done that many videos, but wow, he's so cool at explaining stuff, it's just like, it's just talks and it just makes it so plain and clear it's like really good and he was the one who really helped me with who I say the event happened and when he was talking about white light and I've been you know making videos about the seven colors and breaking it down and stuff like that and and him talking about the white light and obviously that's all the colors together and I feel like that's part of the the event the awakening is this all of us are ready in this universe. So all the seven planets, each representing a colour, and um, already, all of us are ready, and that's the white light. <coughs> so thank you to Activation Coaching and Thomas Shampoo. And I do think it's worth mentioning, because I did in the last video as well, that two guys called Transformation. Um, I like 
I like them and again I like the way um, one of them he's really good at explaining stuff and they're they're putting they're getting the information you know I, I don't know what specifically to say about that I don't I haven't sort of found a way to bring it all together in a sense I feel like I've got my two wing men and maybe there's four wing men or whatever and and just talking about men all the time but the the, the women are the ones that are going to make things happen like we men can shine a light on stuff we can find the truth and 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 find the way and stuff like that but it's, it's the women who are going to make things happen and they're hitting their their bottom for this month um, right now and the daily the daily moon moods so they'll be up um, coming up tomorrow high noon and then they'll be up coming up for the next moon and I found a really succinct way of saying this so the moon moods it's the ebb and the natural ebb and flow of the soul daily moonly yearly up one down the next girls are up when boys are down that basically explains what happens instead of talking about two two twos and making it complicated and you think you know, two two what so two it's a cycle of two years and two moons and two days and well is that you know, it's complicated but the up one down the next you know that's kind of simple to Thing. And you can figure out for yourself whether you're coming up on your year, moon or day. You know, obviously it's going to take time and I've been monitoring this um, for a good few years really because I, when I started going without cannabis and I was feeling the come down and I noticed that the come down was about 10 days off cannabis. So quite long really. Um, so I didn't understand that initially that daily I was having a mood swing monthly and yearly. But so gradually as I was noticing the difference each time I was coming off cannabis, it was different. That was making me think, hang on. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely true. It's, I, can, I, can, I notice it and how people act and how they are. And... Um, and the thing to do is, you know, when, when you're on your up is to, you know, and that's the thing, you, I can be on my up but because I've got connection to my soulmate open. I'm also feeling that when she's on her down. So, and I, and when I'm on my down, I lean on her too. I do that. And th that's, that's kind of what we are here to look after each other. So, but, you know, we are so different, male and female. This is all so much nonsense. How the, I've even heard someone on the radio say that gender isn't binary. It's just really, really ridiculous. We are so different. Our soul, on the soul level in the 5D, masculinity and femininity are so different from each other. What's that? <laughs> moving things around and I said to someone who was sort of waiting for the event you know like, oh, the event happened and I said well I, you know I hope you're not looking out the window or looking on the news to see it it's happening within so and I, I, don't, I think last night I had some pretty strong feelings not to like March the 28th I had I'm trying to explain it's like it was about the white light and all through my life I'd had this sort of, oh yeah, this sort of communication that something's coming and it was a bit scary and when I was 19 I scared the crap out of myself, thought I was going mental. But so that March 28th I was able to feel it in a happy way so it all got accepted and it was like this, like in the centre of my heart. I'd never had anything so central and you can always go deep you see. Anyway. So last night I had a little bit more of that, but also had this when my leg went numb and it right by my bum just felt like this thing and I wanted to stop, I wanted to jump out of it, but it was like, no, come on, you, you just 
let go just let go don't fear that you're gonna die and stuff like that because a little thought pops into my head my son's upstairs what about if I die you know and he's got to come down and see me like <laughs> And it's just, you know, these little, you know, it's like something didn't want me to do it. And that often drives me on, in a sense, when they try and interrupt me with a phone or text or whatever. And, and just go for it and let go and do it. Anyway, and I did. And so, and I think that had been something I'd been struggling with for a while. But I let it go and let that feeling. And I just know from that that some aspect of my life now... I will not have an issue that I did before, some bit of fear about this or that or the other. Can't be 100% sure what it was. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, baby. <coughs> um, right, I've got stuff written down. I didn't want to keep looking at my notes. Though. I did, and I'm going to stop making notes. Because I did realise that it's so like that thing about the up one, down the next, you know, I didn't write anything of that down and then, you know, a few days or a week after I'd sort of been thinking about it, there was a, a comment on YouTube where I, this was appropriate and it just sort of came out and I think that's how I'm going to leave it. Now I'm not going to write any notes down. I don't need them, and in a sense, because you know I've got the notes, so I just keep thinking, oh, I've got to look at my notes and see what I'm talking about. Whereas if I didn't have the notes, I'd just obviously get on the set, wouldn't I? We could work from the back. So I said, connecting with sisters via my soul, mate. I've done that. All right, let's go on to Yeshua. Okay. Right. Yeshua, the fifth Christ. And what we're going to do here is we're going to straighten out this word. Because everyone's saying, oh, you have to have Christ in, in you. And the, you're using the wrong word. Okay, and I'll explain why. Yeshua was the fifth Christ. Christ, anointed one, Messiah. He spoke, he was channeling this one eternal love. You know, when he's saying, I am the truth and the life, and da 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 da, making these majorly bold claims. Most of them can be found in John. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I've got coffee in my moustache. Um, most of them can be found in John. You know, if you read that, you think, he's like high on mushrooms or something. He's chan he was channeling that one eternal love when he was saying those things. So that's why then when Paul is commenting on it, and that's basically what Paul is doing. Yeah, Paul felt a bit of Holy Spirit. He was in there at the beginning, but he began to lose it. And he was basically commenting. And so when he's, he's saying, have the Christ within you, he's thinking of this Yeshua saying these things, I am, I am, and as if that was him. But it wasn't. He was channeling. So, it's not the Christ within you, it is the one eternal love within you. That's what it is. So, it's the Christ is something else. The Christ is the vessel for God. God has chosen God's chosen someone every thousand years that he would be able to communicate through. Um, if it was an immaculate uh, conception, whatever went on, something went on, and God has now got someone on earth that he can connect to. And she. Um and I'm beginning to wonder if there's also the female equivalent and that just hasn't made it into the Bible, you know, so that God does both soul pairs. God does both the male and the female. And that's something I'm thinking about. Um, 
But anyway, so, because when, you know, if God is able to get through to one of his children on earth, that child on earth can feel it and therefore it can be spread because we're all connected. And as Yeshua often said, while I'm in the world, there is a light in the world. But there will be darkness to come because he knew he was going. So that's why it makes a difference. Yeah. So it's this, I mean, people will carry on doing what they're doing, the Christ within you, whatever. And yeah, the Christ consciousness is right. You, you can achieve the Christ consciousness. And it is the knowing, the, the understanding deep down in your heart that you're sustained by this one eternal love. And lots of people have been taking it as, yeah, we're all one. And we are, in a way, all one. That one eternal love, you know, is in everyone, including in our Mother, Father, God. But if you're feeling that one eternal love, it's coming through Mother, Father, God. So you are in a good state, otherwise you wouldn't be feeling it. But it wouldn't take you long just to notice there is a your mother and father that right there with you. A creator. Uh, so I said about that language of vibration. The wingmen done the moon moods. So So the first thing I did, like, because I'd been about a week without cannabis, and sat down, and the first thing that came to me was that cannabis is like a DNA activator. It's activating what's, you know, these parts of our DNA that nobody understands. Um, it activates them and enables, enables the physical body to do things. And this is what I also figured is that <clears throat> so I I am not the Christ. My physical body is the Christ. It's just my physical body, it's not my soul. My soul, I am just like and I did I really got this feeling in meditation where I sort of I sort of popped out and I was this sort of white sort of shape being like this with two little legs <laughs> and I came out and it's like I had this you know different feeling that I was just like I wasn't didn't feel quite the same anymore you know I've been used to having this body all my life right and it's 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 different I am different than most people that I knew my brothers and friends and done things differently and but in this meditation I was my soul and I just it, yeah it's just like a different feeling that I just I was just more in with everybody and it felt quite oh you know because it's different sorry probably not explain that very well so but what I'm saying is this is the physical body the Christ I am the one in control of this body, um, but basically being guided by God and doing what I'm pretty sure God wants me to do, listening to that vibration, and knowing, knowing, and um, so activating that DNA that is mine, and you smoke cannabis, you'll activate the DNA that is yours. And it's... yeah. yeah. I mean, it's good that no one believes me. Believe me. <laughs> I'm sure it's meant to be that way. If people had believed me, say, a few years ago when I was first sort of saying stuff like this, if people had believed me and you know, and then they'd like believed in me and you know and stuff and what about then if I had doubts then I'd like feel really bad for these people who'd believed in me. 
Whereas at the moment, like, no one believes me, so then I can have doubts, and it's fine. Tomorrow I could go, no, it's all BS, I've just been making it up, it's a load of nonsense, um, get on with my life. Uh, so in that sense, it's, it's kind of good. And I do, but I do get the feeling now that perhaps people are, a few people might begin to start believing that I'm the one. Or this body, this is the body. And um, maybe not, maybe. So, but I do, you know, it would become sort of quite a responsibility. And I've always taken it seriously anyway, but I'd just have to take it more doubly seriously, perhaps. Or not. Anyway, but, and there's another bloody good reason why no one believes me. I mean, it's a good thing that no one believes me. And, I mean, imagine if loads of people believed me, it'd just be a freaking nightmare, wouldn't it? I mean, I'd probably have people turn up at my house and they'd be constantly emailing me and probably ringing me and oh, it could become a real, real pain. And then there might be people who want to kill me and, you know, if it went wild, wild, I'd have to have security. <laughs> I wouldn't want that. I would just want God as my security. And perhaps God's been my security by making sure no one believes me. And that's good in a way. Uh, uh, yeah, because I think, you know, I know people, not many people go back and look at my old videos. Whereas if people believed me, they would. And they should, I think. This is what I think. Because I think it would be helpful. Um, there we go. Nothing else on the notes. So... That will do. Um, so yeah, just everyone, you know, do as much meditation as you can. Think, you know, you think when, if someone's meditating, they're not doing anything. Well, you know, that's certainly not what I experience. When I'm meditating, I'm doing a lot. And I said this to my son yesterday, I said, how do you think God made the world, say? Did he, did he, she use their hands? No. They must have created it from their soul, in their soul space, right? So, you know, if that much can be achieved by doing in the soul, then, you know, probably a good idea to start practicing it. And don't worry that you haven't got anything physical to say, oh, look what I made. You know, you are doing something in that 5D dimension. It's going to benefit you for eternity. And anything you don't do is going to hold you back for eternity. So there's, and you'll feel this if you get into meditating, you'll feel that there's actually quite a lot of times you'll just have this feeling there's nothing I could be doing right now that is better for me than this. And I'm going to end it there. There is nothing that I could be doing now that is better for me than this. Sit still. Allow. Let go. Go deep. Sincere. Humble. Sensitive. Gentle. Loving, courageous, endure, don't suffer, don't need to suffer, you don't need to sacrifice, you don't need to sacrifice anything physically. But at times you may have to be prepared to let go of everything. Okay, love you lots, my family. So we're all one family. And there's more on other planets and in the spirit world, all family. Ah oh, yeah, Secure Team did a video 
There's no phosphorus in the universe. Life is limited. We've got to look after this planet. And let it recover. Give it the credence that it knows what it's doing. Stop interfering with it. We learn from it. It's our mother. And our father shines down from above. Every time you breathe in, you're receiving love from God. You don't need any tricks so that the air is going up your nostrils evenly. Just relax and it will come in. Wow. <laughs> okay, bye.